Welcome in the world of artificial intelligence under artificial intelligence using Python series of lecture. This is lecture on search method part 1b. Hi, I am Dr. Sunil from GCS Solutions. The contents of this lecture are state space search for graph problems, generic search process, informed and uninformed search methods. So we'll see each one of this in details in the subsequent slides. Now, many of the real world problems are represented as a graph because graph uh, problems are most popular in the programming world. Many domain and their knowledge are represented by graphs. But the graph representation, whatever we have, uh, either in the form of diagrams or in the form of description is not suitable for the algorithm. So uh, AI more specifically needs the information uh, of the graphs to be represented as a state space. Uh, now, state space representation of graph is done using simple and effective way called adjacency list. Now, to understand more on the state space, I request you to watch video lecture 3 part A of this series so that you will get a clear idea of what state space is. Now, taking example of this uh, graph, whatever graph sample graph we have here, now focus uh, here where I am pointing. Now, we have a simple graph with four vertices A, B, C, D. And the edges are that A is connected to B, A is connected to C, B is connected to C, B to D connection is there and C to D connection is there. Now this uh, graph, uh, here it is shown, uh, just focus where I am highlighting now. The graph is uh, having four nodes and uh, different edges connections. So this is undirected graph. That means if there is a connection from A to B, there is also a connection from B to A back. Now we have been given start node A and goal node D. Now this graph is not enough to be given as an input to the algorithm. Now this graph is represented in a typical way called a state space representation. Now see this tree diagram where I point. Now this tree has a starting point A because we have been given that our goal, should, uh, our goal is to find D and our search start with node A. So here A is the node starting point, so initial uh, node. So here it is taken as a root. Now uh, to the root of any given node, we have to find the successor. Successors means directly connected nodes to any given node. For example, A has a direct connection to B and C. So those nodes are represented at, at the next level of the tree diagram. So B and C are at the next level of uh, initial node root node A. Now we also can have a representation of the successor of B. Now B has direct uh, connection to A, A node C and node D. So those are represented at the next level. And again uh, as C is a successor of A, C also has direct connection to A, B and D. So those are represented here. Now D is directly connected to C and B, so it is represented here that is the successor of D is B and C. So these way if you see here the information related to graph is uh, represented as a tree, a hierarchical uh, structure of the node and their immediate successor. So these nodes are called immediate successor or also called as child nodes in the uh, context of tree representation as such if you see the graph neither b or c is a child of a but if we see the graphical uh, uh, that is conversion to the tree diagram now in tree you will find that b uh, are at the next level of a so that's why b and c are called immediate successor or child node or candidates of a so this is the standard uh, notion in the world of ai now this graph whatever we have converted into state space tree representation, this tree is also not useful for the algorithm because algorithms needs information in terms of data structure. So uh, the preferred data structure is adjacent adjacency list representation and uh, as modern programming languages have so many collection and maps uh, to represent any complex data uh, as a data structure. So here I am assuming the dictionary of the Python. Now here 
I have representation of this state space as a dictionary, so node value pair. So A is the node, uh, and B and C is the value of node A, which depicts that B and C are the immediate successor or child node of A. Similarly, B has a uh, children A, C, D, C has children A, B, D, and D has children B and C. Now, in subsequent lectures, uh, we will uh, deal with many complex type of graphs with uh, uh, complex information uh, of each of these states. For example, here we just have a state that is node A. We don't have any extra information about node A. But in real case, in real world, uh, a node may have so many attributes like a node may have name, it may have a cost, path cost, it may have a heuristic value, it may have even a location value. So there might be so many attributes associated, associated with each of these states. So that's why this uh, state may have a complex representation and with that uh, complex information we can uh, represent that as a state space that we'll see in the next lectures. Now here we are going to see the generic search process. Now, human intelligence exhibits the natural way of doing the thing using mind and thought process. We as a human being, a living being, uh, use mind uh, and thought process to do any action. Even if a small child, assume that he is uh, matured enough to understand what you say, and if you ask that child to find out the red color ball from the bag of balls with many colors, then what that child does? That child will simply take a ball and inspect whether it is a red color or not. If it is not the red color ball, uh, that uh, picked ball will be kept aside and bo that boy will select uh, next or that child will select a next ball. Again, it will check the color whether it is red or not. This way it will search, try to search the red color ball. Assuming that the child has a sense of uh, color. Now, similarly, our generic AI is a child searching a red ball in the bag of balls with different color. This generic AI algorithm just work like a child. And this algorithm is called generate and test. Why it is called generate and test? Because every time it uh, takes the current node, if current node is not a goal node, it will generate the new children. And again, among that children, or a child node, it will pick up randomly any child node and will again test for the goal. This way it keeps doing till all the nodes are inspected and in this journey a goal may be found or may not be. If goal is found, it will return success. If not, then it simply returns the failure. Now, uh, if, if, if we try to put this in more uh, systematic way uh, uh, in terms of programming notation, then here is the algorithm, just uh, focus where I am pointing. Uh, we are using here some data structures. Now, data structure, I mean to say some variables and some lists or arrays or whatever we need. So here we need some uh, variable reference to start with the start or initial state of the graph that is called S0. So our current is S0. Now, assuming that our current is not, that means the starting point is not the goal node. So we have some different starting point and goal is somewhere else. Now, our algorithms, algorithm basically iterates till the entire graph is searched. So here, as starting point is not the goal, so it will try to find out the candidates or successor of the current node. Now, if I assume that A is the starting point, now A has a successor B and C. So that is also depicted in the state space diagram and we have seen this. Uh, uh, in details in the earlier discussion of this lecture. Now here as there are more candidates uh, of the current node, so it will take those candidates and will pick any node from the successor of the current or candidates of the current. Picking any node or some node from N uh, from the successor list it will check whether that node n which is picked as a successor of the current is goal or not. If it is goal then return success otherwise iterate to get the next successor node and 
keep this task uh, or rather keep doing this task till either goal is found or no goal is found if no goal found then it returns failure this is very simple and uh, basic algorithm of the ai which works intuitively like ai but it is not in the real sense the uh, i mean to say a very sophisticated way of doing the thing now here is the graph the same graph we are we have discussed uh, this is the graph with four nodes and having some age uh, age values rather not age values so age ages are uh, specified here and this is the state space representation which we already discussed and we have been given a as a starting or initial point of the search to be done and g uh, goal is d so with this information we'll try to simulate this algorithm we'll try to uh, run this algorithm on this given graph now here is the algorithm one thing you have to remember is the successor nodes are the children or descendant of the current node so as we represent our graph as a state space we do have hierarchy of the re, uh, nodes uh, and that hierarchy is just a representation of a node with its successor now for example a has successor b and c if we see this state space diagram this focus where i'm pointing now with the highlighter so here b a has successor b and c and what of d d has successor b and c this way we have a list of successor now assume that we have been given that the current node which is the initial and starting point is the node a so just uh, see where i am just pointing uh, here uh, so here a is not the goal but what are the successor of uh, successor for node a so that is given here so we do have one list s which maintains the successor list for any given node we have a successor list for example for node a successor are b and c so it takes this b and c as we have not exhausted the graph so it will pick any node from this child b uh, child list that is b and c so assume that fortunately it picks node b so that is the any node from the six successor that is from b and c it picks b so our n is b n is a node we have picked as a successor of the current node a now this n is checked with the goal now goal is d so is b a goal node that is a d no so it will again iterate it will take b as a current node and it will try to find out the successor of b so what are the successor of b b has successor a c d now it takes that as a list of the successor and it will pick randomly any node assume that fortunately it picks d as a uh, random choice now it checks whether this node n having value d is it a goal node because goal is a d so yes it is goal so it returns success so this way this algorithm basically uh, exhibits the human behavior that is the use of mind and the thought process so it has a very simple memory Uh, and very simple uh, uh, logic to do the things but do remember this particular algorithm is no way an intelligent algorithm so we'll see that in the next slide the problem with the generic search are like uh, this generic generate and test program is very basic and which simulates the ai behavior unintelligently because it doesn't do any task uh, that much intelligently we may call it as a intelligent because it exhibits a childish behavior uh, as we have already seen that uh, if a child is asked to search anything so it will basically inspect one by one uh, that child may not perhaps use uh, proper intelligent uh, uh, that pro child will not be able to uh, i mean to say use more knowledge to make that search efficient so that way this is not the uh, real intelligent algorithm but still it is a very basic and first program it basically uh, uses a blindfold method to do a very simple task uh, of the search in the real world and moreover uh, the real and complicated task of ai programming needs sophisticated search algorithms and that's what we are going to say in the next uh, part of the discussion 
now here we are having a very proper formulated way of doing this search in the ai that is called informed and uninformed search methods now let us first see uninformed which are also called as a blind search method so uninformed and blind search method what is this uninformed and blind search this uninformed search algorithm doesn't contain any domain knowledge such as closeness and location of the goal for example if you want to search goal uh, uh, we may need uh, a very proper information for example you have been asked to search any address so you will be given a name of the person uh, his area then the landmark then the uh, then the uh, building number then the flat number and uh, other information but whatever example we have seen in the earlier discussion that is uh, in generate and test that was a simple graph having only nodes that is the name of the nodes was nodes was the only information available there was no age cost involved there was no location in information involved so uh, that uh, in, uh, representation was a simple uh, representation or information so it was not using any domain knowledge and it was using a brute force way so basically this blind search algorithm uh, uh, which are more sophisticated than the generate and test but still these algorithms even though are little bit uh, smarter than the generate and test but they use brute force way of doing the things and only includes information about how to traverse the tree and how to identify leaf and goal nodes that's it that is the only task but as compared to generate and test that task will be done more sophisticated but uh, as we have seen that in real world we have the problem with a uh, lot of domain information uh, involved in it so informed search algorithms are the algorithms which use the domain knowledge and this informed search algorithm basically uh, uh, use the information uh, which is helpful to guide the search in more efficient way as compared to the uh, uninformed search strategy and informed search are also called as heuristic search methods so this is basically the uh, difference between the informed and uninformed search now in this uh, particular discussion we are not going to see uh, any of this informed or uninformed search methods uh, we will just list down the algorithms which are used uh, exhaustively in ai implementation now this is the list of the informed and uninformed search methods so we have uninformed and blind search like breadth first search uh, uniform cost search then depth first search then depth limit search then iterative deepening depth first search bidirectional search and so many others and under informed search cat category we have best first search and a star algorithm or a star search and these algorithms informed search algorithms basically use heuristic information i hope that you have understood this topic uh, very nicely so dear learner how was the lecture please subscribe gcs solutions like the video if you really like it share among the friends if you find it useful and comment for the improvements we are gcs solutions making technology easy to learn till next lecture be intelligent